I really like my Bamboo Labs X1. It prints really fast, and the AMS is probably the best multi-material unit. The built-in auto calibration with the cameras and LiDAR was really cool to see on the first print. But the more you print with it, the more the auto calibration kind of seems like a waste of time. Time and filament. You'll also start to notice that if you do multicolor prints, it only does one filament, and there could be 15 others. And if you have a P1P, well, there is no LiDAR or auto calibration. I've spent time tuning filament on my Mark III and my Voron 0.1. And while the auto calibration is cool, until Bamboo Labs can add a feature where it saves it in the slicer or saves it per AMS slot, I'd rather just tune my filament myself and load it in the slicer and print. That's why I want to show you guys how to use Orca Slicer so you can run those built-in calibration tools and save your filament tunings in your own profiles so you can just print. Um, I wanted to show you guys before we get into Orca Slicer that if you check the machine G-code yourself and you scroll down to where the auto calibration starts, right here you can see that it actually only checks three pressure advance values that's what this m900 command is it checks 0 0.04 0 0.02 and zero and it doesn't even check your extrusion multiplier at all i also wanted to mention that there's going to be a link for orca slicer in the description so check it out if you want to try it now that we're here in orca slicer the first thing you should do is go ahead and set the filament that you want to use I have some ASA here in my fourth slot that I want to tune, so I'm going to select that before we do the calibration. Then, in the top left, go ahead and select the calibration and select pressure advance. In this, you don't need to change anything. It's already direct extrusion type, and the PA tower is going to be better than the PA line, so we don't need to change that. Going from 0 to 0.1 is fine, and steps of 0.002 are fine as well. So when you hit OK, it'll automatically load this in, and then all you have to do is slice and print. Now that the pressure advanced tower is done, we can kind of start to see what we're looking for with pressure advanced tuning. If you look at this, you can see that as it goes up the tower, the, the corner starts to get less sharp, and it actually starts to split right here. You can see that it's, it's no longer even like touching on the outside, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the height in millimeters up where the corner starts to go away. Then we back down a little bit where the corner is sharpest, and that's the value that we want to use. The corner seems the sharpest right around here. And we can look at the other corners too, and you can see right around here seems the sharpest, or maybe right around here. So let's measure this about 10-ish millimeters. And what we do with that information is, in the chart, you saw that it started from zero and it went to 0.1, and the steps were 0.002, so we take 10 millimeters and we multiply it times the step 0.02 and we get 0.02 for our k value for pressure advance and that's what we would put in to our filament in the tuning profile in orca slicer now that we've run the pa tower test what we can do is we can go into here to edit the preset for the filament and then we can turn on pressure advance and set this value of 0.02 we'll save it and we'll give it a name i'm going to call it Polylight ASA, because that's what the filament is. Now that we have our pressure advance set, we can go into the calibration and do flow rate. So we can do pass one. Now that we have the flow rate loaded in, we can see what it's doing is it's changing the flow rate in large 5% steps. So we have minus 20 to positive 20. And now that it's loaded in, we can slice and print. Now that the first pass of the flow rate is done, you can see that we have all these different little chips here, which are going to be examples of where the flow rate is changing. And it's hard to show this on camera, but you can see, especially on this plus 20 and the minus 20, how there's gapping here on the minus 20, and there's ridges here on the plus 20. So this is an example of extreme over extrusion and this is an example of extreme under extrusion. So we wanna find the one that is the closest to what we're looking for. And if two of them look similar, I would go with the one that is higher. So hopefully this macro shot can show what I mean. On the plus 20, you can see where each line of the filament pushed up against the line next to it. It just creates a ridge. And then the five, you can see it's, it's very flat. There's no gapping in between the lines and there's no ridges created. Zero looks really good as well. 
we might have been able to just stick with this. And then on the minus 20, you can really see, you can see the layer under the top layer. There's so much gapping because each line of filament isn't touching the one next to it. Looking at zero, you can see that it is actually relatively flat and pretty close to what we want. A better way to do this would honestly be to start with pass two with your extrusion multiplier set at one. And then you can just run the one increment steps in pass two so you can really dial it in from there. Minus 20 and plus 20, those extremes, you don't really need to see those because almost all filaments are gonna be around 95 to 98% extrusion multiplier. Now that I've chosen plus five, we'll use this formula that they provide on the GitHub for Orca Slicer on how to take that five and convert it into what our flow rate is gonna become. Now that we have that value, let's put it into our filament profile. We'll save it. And then we will rerun flow rate, but we'll do pass two. So this will do fine steps from our new value and it will go down in 1% steps. So that way we can fine tune exactly what our flow rate needs to be. Taking a closer look at these, I would say minus two or minus three is gonna be the sweet spot. What you wanna look for is if there's any ridging, just go down the next step or potentially the next step after that until the ridging goes away. And that's what you wanna go for. Looking at this minus four and this minus five, you can start to see some of that gapping I was talking about. So you can really see that minus two and minus three are kind of the sweet spot. And after all that, I went ahead and ran two different test prints. This one on the left was with the auto calibration, and this one on the right was after applying all of those things to my filament profile for this filament. One of the most obvious things you can see is on the exterior of the print, there's a little bit more variance in the extrusion here on the outer perimeters on the auto calibration one than there is on the manual calibration one. And that's just due to the extrusion multiplier um, is more dialed in on this right one. On the top, we can see it's pretty similar. I would say this is pretty close to the correct extrusion multiplier. And I would say that this is more dialed in. It's a very even surface, but it's pretty similar. And I'll throw the times up here. After checking out those times, it might not seem like the biggest time savings in the world, but three minutes adds up over time over every single print. And at least you have the peace of mind of knowing that you dialed in your filament yourself and you know that the settings are always gonna be right. I personally only tune uh, pressure advance per filament type. So PLA usually all has about the same pressure advance. And I really only tune extrusion multiplier per filament brand. So I run all of my Prusamin at the same extrusion multiplier, and I run all my atomic filaments at the same extrusion multiplier within the same filament type, so PLA versus ASA. And hopefully with that, you guys are able to dial in your filaments yourself. Um, if you learned something, leave a like. And I wanna hear from you guys, how you guys are dialing in your filaments and how you're getting good prints on your Bamboo Labs printers. Remember, subscribing keeps your prints buttery smooth, and I'll see you guys in the next one.